Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Pocket Direct and I'm here on Technique Tuesday. Running a little bit late. <laughs> we tried something new and it didn't exactly work, so we had to go back to a different way, the old way of doing it. So anyway, it's all good. So today I'm going to be talking about these lovely, they're called Misha's Mittens. It's my niece, isn't she cute? She's a three-year-old, but she's a big three-year-old because daddy's like mm, six foot four or so. And mommy's pretty tall too. So I made her these cute little mittens. You want to show them, Jim? Do you see the little mittens I made her? Aren't they cute? Okay, let me tell you what they're made out of. They're made out of the vintage DK, but I did want to remind you of some things. I don't know if you guys have ever done patterns where you needed a, uh, maybe like a chunky weight hat, and then you wanted worsted weight leg warmers, and you wanted DK weight mittens, what have you. Um, these yarns, when they have the color number, for instance, this is 6113, and this is the, that's the vintage, so it starts with a 6, but the 113 is what matters, because on the regular vintage, it's 5113, and then on the vintage DK, it's 2113. So if you're shopping on Alpaca Direct, and you would like to get the exact same colors in different weights, for different patterns that you might be doing for the winter sets for your little kids or for yourself, just know that you can get these yarns in the same color across the platform from DK weight to chunky weight. And this vintage is a wonderful yarn. It's great for kids because it's 52% acrylic. It has 40% wool in it, but it has no itch to it and it's machine washable. <laughs> It's fantastic. So if you haven't used vintage for your kids' projects, this is a great yarn for that. Everyone's coming online from Good Florida morning, and Texas. Sorry we were and... just a few minutes late, but we are here now. Now I wanted to show you how Baraco Ultra Alpaca and Ultra Alpaca Chunky and Ultra Alpaca Light. Do you see how these are all the same colorway? All the way from this Ultra Alpaca Light. I've used this Ultra Alpaca Light as in DK and sport weight patterns. So, and this is 4285, and then it's 6285 for the thicker, and then 7285 for the thickest yarn. So, again, if you're shopping for Ultra Alpaca and want to get the same colorways across the different weights of yarn, you can do that. Just look at the th last three digits of the number, like 285 for this one, and you can find it across all platforms. So I hope that helps you figure out if you want to do projects and have them in different weights, that's a great way to do it. Now so you used that one for the night shift, didn't you? Didn't you use one of them for the night shift shawl? I something? used Ultra Alpaca Light, and I combined this with the Stark 6 yarn, and it looks very wonderful together. They um, knit uh, beautifully together. So Stark 6 is that um, zopper ball kind of crazy look to it, and it's a sport weight yarn. And then this, um, even though this is called Ultra Alpaca Light and they call it a DK weight, it looks great with that Stark 6. So if you haven't done the Night Shift Shawl or the Shift, which is the cowl, um, you can use those yarns for the um, Night Shift Shawl and they'll look beautiful. So every week we have a prize. And for this last week we had some Halo, and it was Atlantis or Carnival. And you guys are supposed to choose and vote, and we've already done that for this last week. So now for this week, I was thinking, because I'm knitting with Vintage DK, this gold color and this kind of a, a green-blue color are the two ones that I wanted to offer. So the way that you guys enter to get your prize is you post comments in that comment section. Let us know what you're knitting on. Maybe you have a comment about what I'm talking about. Hey, maybe you can add extra tips to make um, other people's projects even better too, as well as we're going along, and then you'll be entered to win. So for the prize for this week is this vintage DK and it's in the gold colorway or the green blue colorway and you guys choose so you vote in this comment section and then you'll be entered to win for next week's prize so vote on that and then um, I wanted to go over a few things with these mittens now this pattern That's me. calls for two at a time in the round right so, and I started at the cuff. And so I thought maybe we could go over some tips. I wanted to go over some tips to make knitting two at a time in the round for those beginners who are just learning 
easier for you to accomplish. And so I had a few tips that I wanted to go over. So let's... Hey, Kel. Uh, yes? So this pattern, um, uh -huh. there was a question, where do they get it? So it's on our website. Oh, yes. Uh, this is a free download on Alpaca Direct. I wrote the pattern up for you, and I thought maybe... A lot of us have little grandchildren running around, and she is my niece, but I do have um, great several. Great niece. Yes, she's my great niece, and she is such a beautiful little girl. And she, her mommy and daddy like to go snow camping, and so I will be making her some more with higher content of alpaca in it. But I wanted to get, first make her a set that's machine washable so that she can run around the yard and play, play with her bike. And then... Um, well, tell them about Kara, too, how, how she cherishes all that stuff. Remember you? She oh, uh, my, oh, my twin sister's... Kara is her name. Uh, my twin sister has a daughter, and her name is Kara. And she was born um, 10 days apart from my son, Brandon. And she is so cute because I just recently helped her move to Osborne. We helped her get settled in her house and all that. And she had this special box of her knitted goods, and she cherishes them so much. So I'm like, this is fantastic definitely a knit worthy young lady and so I got busy knitting for Misha because she mommy cherishes everything that you make for her and she is going to keep it in a special place and make sure that it lasts forever because she just loves that she's also a knitter and so she knows what it's like to knit all these projects she knows how many hours we put into our knit projects and she's going to take care of it so I love knitting for people like that I don't know if you guys do you guys know anyone out there that's like that because oh my goodness it made me smile from ear to ear listening to her talk because I'm going oh this is awesome because we all want to knit and it's lovely to knit for those people who just love the products that you make so it's pretty cool so now I wanted to go over those few little tricks that'll help you when you're doing two at a time in the round using the magic loop method some people really struggle with this and I thought that maybe I could give you a few tricks and maybe you've already thought of the tricks. Maybe you haven't. I'm not sure, but I wanted to go over it again anyway because I want you guys to all be able to knit in the round using two at a time magic loop method because it's speedy. It's much faster way of doing it and it's fun and your projects look beautiful. This is matching leg warmers that I'm making for her and I'm going to be releasing this pattern for you next week which is what we're going to be talking about. So some couple things you'll notice okay here I have a little tiny pair of mittens that I'm doing for Claire Bear and that's my daughter's um, baby. baby and she is six months old and so I have this here and if you can look at it and just look at these needles the cords okay just notice the cords blue cord red cord what do you notice about it do you notice anything about it one lays flatter than the other one has memory and one does not so if you can try and find needles that do not have memory when you're doing the magic loop method two at a time you will not be struggling quite so much with the doing this method if you don't have to continuously try to get the cord to move out of your way and then have it bounce right back into your work so another thing that I wanted to show you is that when we're doing two at a time magic loop method, if you separate the balls, so you have two balls that you're working with. Now this is kind of messy because the dog got into it and caught it, um, the sweet little doggy, she caught it on her foot. And so anyways, it kind of got messed up. But if you have two balls instead of one ball that you're working for, uh, from you can put one on the right hand side of your lap and one on the left hand side of your lap when you're knitting and sitting on the couch and then they won't tangle up quite so much okay so another thing that we can do is let me move this one out of the way yeah you see how all these things kind of get tangled with each other so let's move that one out of the way so now I'm back to these little tiny mittens that I have here and say that I'm using one ball and it gets tangled right so an easy way to untangle it I'm gonna stand up here so I can show you my little trick that I do okay here it is it's tangled so if you take it and you just pull it tight do you see how it unwinds it totally unwound 
<laughs> Did you catch that, Jim? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. So that is a way that I unwind my yarn if I get it tangled up and it um, starts going into a mess. Now, you see my tails here are very long and these tails can get caught on your working yarn. So keeping your tail six to eight inches will help you keep these tails from twisting together with your working yarn. Now I'm trying this new yarn. It's a yarn sample that came from Peru and it's a cotton alpaca blend. And um, boy, it splits. So I don't know if you can see right here what, where it's kind of unwound or whatever. It really splits. So I don't think I will be bringing this in even though I was so excited because it's 85% Pima cotton, 15% alpaca. I like that blend, but I don't know if you guys will enjoy yarn that splits quite so much. So didn't make I don't the know. cut. Oh, it's kind of disappointing because I really like the idea of Pima cotton and um, baby alpaca because there's no itch to it. Adds a little bit of warmth. And for little Claire, I wanted to use this sample anyway because she's teething, and having Pima cotton that she ch she's chewing on is much better than having her chew on wool, don't you think? Because oh, yeah. she could get wool in her mouth. And so um, I I really like the fabric this makes, but it sure does split. So we'll have to see how that goes. And now, oh, I wanted to show you another thing. So you see how this cord is very long. This is a 47 inch cord. When you're doing the magic loop two at a time uh, mittens in the round, I believe that for beginners especially, the 40 inch cord is adequate because if you get the cord too long then there's more cord in general that you have to deal with and you're not your work is not anywhere near the edge and it's just more cord that you have to try and keep out of your way so for those of you who have never tried the two at a time magic loop method i would say use a 40 inch cord and you will be a happy camper. If you try to use a 32 inch cord, I believe this cord right here is 32 inch, your work will slide right off the end when you're working and um, you will lose your halfway point right here. You will lose this halfway point if you use a 32 inch cord. So for beginners and for advanced knitters, it's just easier to use a 40 inch cord for doing these mittens. Now, I also wanted to go over one more thing that I just totally love. And in this pattern, I tell you to use the German um, twisted cast on. So I, it's very much like a long tail cast on and then it requires your tail to make the stitches. So you could take a tail and if you're gonna do 20 stitches, for instance, you could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then hold that spot and then make it and that would be enough for 20 stitches. So you doubled it? Yeah, I just doubled the part. I didn't double the tail. I just doubled the part where I would be making the stitches because I want my six or eight inch tail or whatever. So then I have my tail going toward my tummy and I have my working yarn is just flipped over the top and then watch how I take my fingers and go into the center and I just give that yarn a little twist. Do you see how it twisted like that? Do that again, twist, okay? Now I'm set up for the long tail cast on and instead of, I, I'll show you how it's different. You go under, up, into the center, and done. That's one stitch cast on. So, so what is that called? This is the German twisted cast on or the old Norwegian cast on. The reason why I like this cast on is it's a nice stretchy yarn uh, cast on because you're actually using more yarn. Instead of going like this and grabbing the yarn straight as you would in a long tail cast on, what you're doing is you're going under, up, into the center, grabbing that yarn and bringing it through. It's doing a little bit more yarn in each stitch. So what you get is a more elastic cast on it and actually looks really nice too. So I really like this cast on and that is called the German Twisted or Old Norwegian. So 
I'll just do a few more stitches so you can watch me. And I just love this cast on. It's good for garter stitch. It makes almost like a garter stitch edge. It's good for ribbing. It's good for the around the edges of a hat. I would use it anytime I would use the, um, the uh, long tail. I would use this one for the most part just because it looks so nice. And you see how I'm dipping my thumb forward and it helps me get my yarn back to where I need, uh, my needle back to where I need it. And my thumb is just tipping forward. And let me show you how nice this looks on here. So that is the Old Norwegian or German Twisted. And you can see on both sides it looks really, really nice. And it has more uh, yarn in each stitch, so it's a little stretchier. So on this mitten, when I did this one, I, th I did the regular cast on. And it's not super stretchy. But then if you look at little, whoops. Sorry, <laughs> it fell off the table, so I had to retrieve it. <laughs> but if you look at this one, that one's pretty darn stretchy. It stretches really wide and it's looks so good on both sides. See how nice that looks. So you guys, if you haven't tried this German twisted or old Norwegian cast on, I would highly recommend it. It's so fabulous. Now I wanted to just take one second because we have this wonderful book that Bracco has given to us. And what it is, is this is a comfort, it's using the comfort and vintage yarns, right Jim? Mm -hmm. And um, it's by Nora uh, Gogan. Gowen. Gowen. Gone. 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 And the Bracco design team. And um, if you've seen, we have quite a few of her patterns on our website. She does a good job with patterns. And this book you can get, and how do you get it? You get it when you purchase 10, ten skeins one. of Comfort Worsted, That's right? Correct. And then you get a free book to you sent in the mail. And I just wanted to leave through here. There's crochet patterns. So let's, let, I'm just going to do a quick little leave through here. That'll be as supplies last. We have yes, 20 um, books. Yes, so the first 20 people that ordered the Comfort, and I like Comfort. Don't they have cute, look? that's cute, that's a uh, Claire Cardigan. And that's a crochet pattern using some little bubbles. Cute. And then we have um, a, one of those circular blankets. And it looks like it's just simple ribbing with garter stitch. And little bib. <laughs> that's really cute. What a darling baby. So darling. And then we have a cute little uh, granny square blanket um, with some different... It almost looks like a stitch sampler in crochet. So that's pretty cute. I like that one. And look at the little leather booties that go with it. <laughs> I love the baby books. Oh, how sweet. A little coat. Yep, cute. There's the back of the coat and it has a hood on it. So all these patterns are patterns that you get with the book and I'll do it a little bit faster, Jim, so I can show them. There's a ton of blankets in here and a little dress and shirts and onesies and another little blanket so it has some really really cute patterns in here and all you have to do see i'm just gonna oh that, that one was cute see mm -hmm. it's a cable blanket that's cute a cute little sweater that would match yeah so anyway this is a great little babies and toddlers comfort knitting and crochet by the Baraco design team just buy 10 skeins Yay. of comfort. Which so need. I thought that was pretty good. I want to do a couple of those patterns in there. I like, I haven't crocheted in a little while and I need to get back to it. <laughs> and, but I really enjoy when I do a lot of knitting and I'm ready for a break, crocheting is fantastic. And let's see who is the winner this week. For our lovely but for the last people, yarn. let me have them vote one more time because I think some sure. people joined. Oh, they didn't okay. know who the prize no was. Um, for our prize for this week, I need you to help me. I have this golden color in the vintage DK or the blue color in vintage DK. And if you guys can help me vote so that we can choose the prettiest color for next week's winner. And for this week was our Halo watercolors. And this is a hand painted yarn by Alpaca Yarn Company. And it's 100% baby alpaca. And let's see who the winner was for this one. 
Let's see. Oh, Darlene Johnson. It was the one on the, the light one. Congratulations. What, Jim? It was the lighter one. Oh, and the color that won for this week was Atlantis. Yay. Darla Johnson, all you have to do is get in contact with us at customer service at Alpaca Direct and we'll send your yarn in the mail. This makes a great carry along yarn. If you want to put it with another yarn and make hats with it, it is fantastic. It's one of my favorite things. And last week I used it for a poncho pattern, right? And um, it's beautiful. Oh, there's a question for yes. maybe for next week, but sure. the question was, are you going to show how to join cuffs, the cuffs? Oh, 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 oh. So, have, uh, did should I show them? Oh, we, maybe next week. Um, actually, can I show you next week? I'll show you how to cast on for the two at a time in the round. Um, and there's a special way that you cast on. So, you, a lot of times who are when you're just beginning to learn two at a time in the round, what you do is you cast on for one, knit a row, and then you cast on for the second one, knit a row, and then you put them together, and then you do the whole thing. But there's a way that you can cast on, and you can cast on for two at a time, all at once. So you do not have to transfer any mitten to a different needle or anything like that. You just cast on, and away you go. <laughs> when I first learned this cast on, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the most ingenious thing I had ever seen. So I want to teach you how to do it next week. But we'll work on that. And then next week I'll be releasing the lovely leg warmers. So. And Meg has the, yeah. she, we have a link for the mittens, right? For this one? Yes. And the pattern for this one is free. I wrote up the pattern so that you could enjoy it too. And if you look here on Misha's mittens, they fit her to a T. She likes them. She wanted to keep them. And I told her, you have to wait till after today so I can show them for Technique Tuesday. And, um, she was a little bit disappointed, but she allowed me to take them back just so I could show them to all of you so that you guys can make them for your little kitties too. <laughs> so I hope that you have a great week. And next week we will be talking about um, the leg warmers. And I have a bunch of uh, exciting things to talk to you about there. So you guys have a great week and I'll see you next Tuesday.